live and direct from the arena Tachikawa Tachiha in Tokyo, Japan. Brainchild of living legend Kazushi Sakuraba, the grappling team survival match. This is Quintet. You're listening to Stuart Fulton, and with me today, calling these Kachinuki winner stays on team battles, and fresh off a beautiful submission win in MMA herself, the mighty Mei Yamaguchi. Welcome, Mei. Hi, everyone. So your fight went very well. Please tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, last week I just had a fight and won by Armar in third round. You know, it's always great to win by that submission. I was there watching, and it was an excellent fight, I have Thank to you. tell you. <laughs> great to have you back here today. Colin Quintet with me, one of the best grappling shows in the world. Let's take a look at the team lineups in just a moment. First of all, we're going to see Team 10th Planet versus Team Deep Jewels in the first match. Then, Team BJJ Kunoichi versus Team Sun Chlorella in the second match. The winners of those will proceed to the final to decide the first ever Women's Grappling Team Survival Champions in Quintet Fight Night 3. Team 10th Planet is headed by Liz Carmouche. Team Deep Jewels headed by King Reina. Team BJJ Kunoichi headed by Rikako Yuasa. And Team San Clorella headed by wrestling legend Miyu Yamamoto. Also, today punctuating the tournament action, two special single matches. Tomoshige Serra faces Shuto Watanabe, and Shutaro Debana takes on Hobson Tanno. Both Serra and Debana are quintet veterans. Serra represented his team, Carpe Diem, winners of Quintet Fight Night 1 last year, and Debana is coming off an outstanding flying armbar victory over Minoa Man in Quintet Fight Night 2 just a couple of months back. So let's take a look at this lineup here. You know some of these fighters on Team Deep Jewels, May, right? Yeah, I train uh, some of the girls, um, but most, most of them, they have like uh, judo and wrestling backgrounds. Um, Emi Tomimatsu, she's a black belt in jujitsu. So they're all good in grounds. That's right. Everybody watching around the world, take a look at the orders here. This is a huge part of how things will or may go down in Quintet today. First, Sempo, so Liz Carmouche will face King Reina. Following that, we have the Jiho, Chuken, Fukusho, and Taisho. So, as you can see here, BJJ Kunoichi, Yuki. Sugiuchi will face Miyu Yamamoto from Team Sun Chlorella first up. You also know quite a few of these members here, and you faced them before. Yes, um, in BJJ, I fought in a tournament uh, some of the girls. Well, they're, they're pretty good, like uh, especially uh, famous Dikako Yuasa. She's like three times world champion. Huge star right here. Yes, idea. yes. And also all other fighters, they're really um, good, famous in Jap Japanese BJJ. And like in Team Sun Corolla, they're mostly in wrestling backgrounds. And um, I, I fought in MMA with uh, Mika Nagano. She's, uh, she's like wrestling elite. And also Megumi Sugimoto, she's, uh, she was a wrestling elite in university. So. We have some fantastic lineups today. A number of the competitors mentioned Sarah McCann. She's one of the biggest here, if not the biggest, and she's going to be a handful for anyone she faces. Yeah. Another interesting point to note here on Team Sun Clorella, Miyu Ikemoto, she's just 14 years old. She's still in junior high school. She competed in the amateur quintet yes. down in Kyushu, and she tapped out four members and took the last one to a decision and took out the whole team by herself. Right. Really amazing. looking amazing. forward to her today. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. So stay with us, folks. Quintet Fight Night 3 kicks off right now. それでは、大会プロデューサー、桜庭和志。
私より皆様にご挨拶をさせていただきます A few words from Kazushi Sakuraba himself. He's asking everybody if their pollen allergies are okay. That's a huge thing out here this time of year. This is the first Quintet women's tournament. I think it's going to be a lot of fun because they're lighter and their movement will be a lot faster. Please watch the show and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quintet Fight Night 3 in Tokyo. Female Open Team Championship! Hi, I'm Eddie Bravo, and I'm very excited to send a female 10th Planet team to Quintet Saturday, April 6th in Tokyo, Japan. Um, when they asked me, when Quintet asked me to, to, to put together a team, I was really excited because we got amazing girls. Um, we also have Grace Gundrum, who pound for pound is probably our most technical 10th uh, Planet competitor. She's one of our best finishers. Uh, she's um, she's just everybody loves Grace Gundrum. Uh, she's a EBI star. Uh, she's been injured for the last year, but she's coming back, and um, it's going to be amazing to see her at Quintet. This is my first time in Japan. I'm really looking forward to fighting with my 10th Planet team at uh, Quintet Fight Night Three. Um, I'm really I'm going to give 100 percent. And then uh, we also got Liz Carmooch, who's a 10th planet black belt. Just got a black belt from Boogie uh, Martinez. And she's just a straight beast. She fights for the UFC. She's got amazing chokes, uh, super tight professional squeeze. She's going to be hard to handle. I'm really looking forward to not only just being here in Japan, uh, one of my favorite places in the world, but also to represent the team and come out and compete in an environment such as Quint Quintet. Uh, I really like it. It's very unique in that while you're doing an individual sport, you're also doing a team event. And that's a fun thing, especially in this platform. So I'm really looking forward to Sunday and going out and doing my best. Um, Elvira Karpanen, who at 2017 Abu Dhabi beat Mackenzie Dern. She's definitely one of the best 10th Planet players, male or female. I'm very excited to compete in Japan in Quintet. We have excellent we also got Lila, Lila Smaja Cruz, who's a three-time EBI vet and uh, has amazing guillotines, amazing passing, uh, rear naked chokes, amazing leg locks. She's coming just uh, guns a-blazing. And our final competitor is our uh, Brazilian female. Uh, I get to compete against uh, a bunch of Japanese high-level uh, girls, and I'm super excited to be a part of the 10th Planet female team. I get to compete alongside my 10th Planet sisters, and I'm just super stoked to be a part of this, and be a part of history, and be a part of the 10th Planet Association and the 10th Planet family. Her name is Fabiana George. She's um, very good at leg locks, very good at the old school 10th Planet system. You gotta watch out for her electric chairs and uh, her electric stone sweeps. This is going to be a tremendous tournament. Uh, I feel that the 10th Planet female team is the team to beat, uh, but uh, we're not taking anybody lightly. I'm super excited to be here in Japan and represent 10th Planet females, the first female quintet. It's 
such an exciting experience, so I can't wait. Whatever happens, I'm just excited to be here. Finally, Deep Jews got Queen Tetomi Sansen. First of all, the young hope of Aoi is wrestling. The Kazukazu has been able to win the wrestling elite. The opponent is the Planet of the Yabai team, but the JLS team is not going to lose. I want to win the Nabi Yukari. She is a Judo student. 韓国にも柔道留学をしていたというファイターです。えっと今回クイーンテッドのメンバーに選んでもらって、自分の役割っていうのはやはりチーム的には小さい人が多いチームなので、しっかり勝ちを取りに行きたいと思っています。そして現ディープジュースチャンピオンのマイサー選手です。ここ地元立川にの選手です。この分試合は地元の中に入ってますから。ぜひいただきます。私は全選手の中で一番身長が小さいらしいんですけど、立川の皆さん、立川以外の皆さんも一番小さい私が大きい相手を倒すの見たくないですか。ぜひご覧いただきましょう。トムマス選手、MMA の試合では意外と大一戦が多いんですけども、柔術でいうと黒帯を持ってる、まあ本来寝技が強い選手なので、総合の試合では。忠実黒帯と言いつつ全然寝技が出ないんですが、今回はその本領を発揮します。そしてキングレイナ選手、まあご存知ですね。まあ彼女も柔道ベースがあって、先月もアメリカの方に寝技の集合を行ってますので、その成果が出せるんじゃないかなと思ってます。ちょっと前に二週間半ぐらいアメリカに行ってきたので。でそこで練習の時に黒帯の人だとやっていて、圧倒的にあ結構だんだんだんだんできることが増えてきてるし、最後の方ではあの黒帯の人たちにも一本を取ったりできていたので、今回その成果が出せるかなと思っています。ディープジューズは最強です。I'm Eddie Bravo and I brought with me five savages from the Ten Planet Association. Get ready for an epic night of jujitsu. はじめにチームディープジュエルスの入場です。
Please come up to the mat. It, me Yamaguchi, our first match teams lined up. Team Deep Jewels, each with their little friends with them. Uh -huh. And Team so 10th Planet yeah. facing them. Now, for the first round battle. <laughs> They take a bow. We are locked and loaded. The air is tense. Eddie Bravo. Also up here, Eddie handpicked the very best women and put them together for Quintet today, just as he did with the men. Sub only is their thing. Eddie's all about dragging opponents into his game. He says on paper, should blast through the first team in the first round. In the second round, Sarah McMahon and Vikako are going to be tough. First bout of the night, Liz Carmouche versus King Reyna. There's about a five kilogram difference between them, so this match will be eight minutes long. Anything over seven kilograms in weight difference, and the bout time is halved to four minutes. And we are off. King Reyna, always with the attitude, always with the confidence, and she is facing an absolute beast here today in Liz Carmouche. Liz Carmouche represents 10th Planet San Diego. She was last in Japan in 2006, I believe. I was surprised at how much Japanese she understands and speaks. Mm -hmm. She tells me she was cutting for a wait for a fight in Prague when she got the news about joining Quintet, so she had to kind of hold down her excitement for right, right. a little bit. She's part of this unique team of different styles, uh, some high-level judges competitors, and not unfamiliar with opponents of different weight classes. Liz herself has faced a, a huge opponent before, I believe, uh, over 250 pounds. Yeah, and King Reyna seems really confident right there. For sure, she yeah. represents uh, Fight Club 42, mm -hmm. and her MMA record is 11 and 2. Four of those wins by submission. She's yeah. coming into this with virtually no weight cut. She usually has to cut quite a lot of weight, you know. Right. Uh, she's increased her usual grappling training, and she's been quite vocal about looking to take out all five members. Right. Now, the referee has just indicated two shidos, one each, given for not pressing the action enough. So take a note of these, these could come into play later on. Watch out for King Reyna's top pressure to armbar. She's very good with that. And she says recently she's been working on the back take to rear naked choke. She's just come back from training in America. Yeah. King Reyna started judo in elementary first grade. Her father was a judoka. She went to the local dojo, tried it and loved it. She has a grappling base, but she enjoyed kickboxing too. So she decided to do MMA. In just her second fight, she was 1-0 and at the time. She faced Shayna Baszler and won. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. Yeah, it was a very tough fight. Uh -huh. And she told me that she found it quite tough to find position and keep position right, because right. Shayna Baszler was just so good. Three stops the action, it's too close to the edge. He's going to reset them. In the center of the mat, a round of applause from everybody present here in Tachikawa Tachiha Arena today. King Reina tells me she's always looked up to Ronda Rousey. Not just her fighting, but working in Hollywood and just uh, doing so many different things. Right, a similar background. Now King Reyna wants to be tight. She's getting a lot of pressure 
from the shoulder of Liz here on top. She's going to be trying to get some space here. Use her half guard. She's going to try and push up out of there. Looking to explode away. She might give her arm in the process. Liz Carmouche drawing her in there. Manages to get into a good position, King Reina. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it, Liz Carmouche is still very dangerous from this position. Yes, a lot of girls, they're good from the bottom position. Yeah, the half guard, yes. the Z guard. Uh -huh. so especially for the 10th Planet team. Yeah. Just coming up to the halfway point through this first bout of the evening. Now they have one Shido each, one warning each. So if this goes the full distance, eight minutes, then the referee will have to decide which of the two was more aggressive and more active. If not, then it will be decided who has the least Shidos. Mm -hmm. So Reyna trying to go for armbar, but her leg is stuck. The voice of Eddie Bravo in the background there, coaching yes, so Liz Carmouche. Yes, she, she want to get the back position from here, but Reyna is stopping by pushing down the face, Liz's face. Yeah, Reyna has the slight weight advantage. Uh, 151 kilos, uh, sorry, pounds, she weighed in at. 68 kilos is Liz Carmouche, 63 kilos weighed in. Now, this is the pressure from the top I was talking about, mate. Right, when right. Reina gets into this spot, she really is very, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Liz Carmouche gets her scramble on and back up. But out there, they are on their feet again. Some hand fighting, looking for position. No points for takedowns, of course, but a good takedown and good positioning means a lot. Yes. Especially for the people who have a judo background, they're really good at putting the weight on the opponent. King Reina's. Oh. <laughs> I was just about to say King Reina's balance is very good, but she lost uh -huh. it there, and now she's in a whole world of trouble with Liz Carmouche on her back. Working the choke. She has the double underhooks at the moment. Over yeah. under. No. Oh, Two minutes left Two on minutes the clock. Liz Carmouche with the pressure. There's a hand fight here. King Reina doing the right thing here, trying to get that other arm out the way and get her head on the other side. Yeah, she want to put her back on the mat, but Liz is stopping that. Yeah, Liz, see here, now Liz has got the head trap there. Once she has the head trap, it's a lot more difficult for Lena to escape. So Lena needs to avoid that head trap, which is the first step in mm -hmm. setting up the rear naked choke. Yes, but now Reina is doing a good job, almost, almost getting out there, but Liz put her leg back. Liz has the, the hooks in. Mm -hmm. She's threatening on the left hand side with the choke arm. She's isolated the arm. That's bad news for King Reina. Forcing her way under the chin there, trying to raise it up to get some space. Slide it in and sink the choke. Still hand fighting. This is a very tough position yeah. to be into with somebody like Liz Carmouche on your back, but watch how deftly King Reina pops out of there. Now she's into the guard on the top of Liz Carmouche. It's only 20 seconds. Very, very short time left here. Liz Carmouche. Looking for Amar. But Right in the arm oh. from the bottom. 
Closing seconds of the first bout. We could see both of these two competitors coming off the mat. Liz Gunbush and King Reyna fight to a draw, which means next in line for both teams will step up to the mat. Grace Gundrum from Team 10th Planet and Hikaru Aono from Team Deep Jewels. This is a very interesting <clears throat> fight because, you know, Grace, she's like pure jujitsu grappler and Aono, she's um, wrestling elite, fighting in MMA, deep jewels, building some records, but um, she's That's so right. young, yeah. Yep, and they're both the shortest in the tournament today. Uh -huh. Hikaru Aono. Trains out of Strapel in Shin Yurigaoka, her MMA record of three and two with a wrestling, boxing, and pro wrestling base. Aono won the 2014 All Japan Wrestling Championships and the 2014 Wrestling Asian Beach Games. She said she was invited to Shuto by Shuto Watanabe himself. Tried the gloves on and loved it. Aono likes attacking from top position. She says she looks up to Kron Gracie. His jiu-jitsu is amazing. She's coming off a loss to her teammate, Emi Tommy Matsu. She won the first round, but lost position in the second round. Grace Gundrum, 16 years of age, the silent assassin, goes to work immediately, pulling Aono into her game. Gundrum representing 10th Planet Bethlehem under head coach J.M. Holland. She won her single matches in EBI, three, four, six, and seven. You can go back to the archives and watch them. And, and, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Gundren's al already making her favorite position here. Yes, Gundren is also the Onit Invitational Women's Atomweight Tournament winner. Watch for her strong guard, her half guard, which she's playing right now. Her rubber guard and her twister are incredibly dangerous. Right. She's full guard here now, closed it up, pulling down the posture of Aono. High guard now. Aono trying a really good job keeping her base. I believe Gundrum is one of the most technical yes. of the 10th Planet yes. fighters, male or female. And she just started wrestling recently, so she has a very bright career ahead mm -hmm. of her. And she's closed up the guard, but she's still working, so she won't receive a verbal warning for that. She's switching. Open guard now. Still pulling down, breaking the posture of Hikaru Aono. Aono pulls up out there and starts to put the pressure on again. Look how Gundam used her toes. That's, um, that gives really hard time for Aono keeping her base. Aono weighed in at 49.9 kilos, which was... Time stop. Time stop here. Both receive a Shido. Six kilos difference here, so mm -hmm. just under the limit for changing the fight time yeah, from eight Arnold minutes to four the, minutes. The choke there. Yeah, Arnold's putting some pressure on yes. the neck, threatening that guillotine. Mm -hmm. Gundrum knows this, of course, starts to defend. Not in any trouble from that neck anymore. Half guard again here. Look at that. Look at how Gundrum is raising up the hips of Aono. That takes away Aono's control and Aono's right, ability right. to stop the movement mm -hmm. of Gundrum. She's got the reverse lockdown. 
Let's see if she rolls it over and, and raises the hips up again. She might switch to another technique if she manages to raise the hips and body weight of Alno. Yeah, Gundam is trying to create some her position from there, but um, they both need to be more aggressive. Otherwise, they'll get another shido. That's right. Yeah, the referees in Quintet are not shy about handing out the shidos. There we go. She's past the guard of Gundrum. Gundrum manages to pull her back into the half guard again. Mm -hmm. Now we could see Alno pummel in here and try to get the underhook on the left hand side of Gundrum. She's leaving her arm in a little bit too long there. Gundrum saw that and attacked it. Referee stops the action and dishes out another Shido to each of these two competitors. Now, if either one of these fighters picks up another Shido, they will be disqualified from this match. Yes. Really nice takedown from Aono. A very flexible yes. Grace Gundrum there. Uh oh. Threatening uh -oh. the arm. Aono feels it immediately, sits up over there. Yeah, that's the thing you have to be aware of against the 10th planet. Well, so far, it seems that although Grace Gundrum has an incredibly technical game, Hikaru Aono has the strength advantage. Yes. Her physical yes. strength. Just over three minutes left on the clock in this second bout of the evening. Quintet fight night three. This is the first match. Team 10th Planet versus Team Deep Jewels. We are in the thick of it. Oh, Arnold listening yeah. to her corner there, pulling out of there. So they have to look for a submission, otherwise there'll be a Shido again. If this is in a normal grappling match, this is pretty aggressive, but in Quintet, you need to be more. Aggressive. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's difficult for a lot of people to get their head around when they first come in contact with Quintet. Right. Just having a good position and, and working a submission is not enough. Mm -hmm. Sakuraba-san says, if you have a dominant position and you're working the submission and you're not finding it in any reasonable length of time, mm -hmm. you have to switch to another submission right, attempt. You have to right. look for something else. That's the yes. whole point of this. Yes. It's a spectator sport. We are increasing the popularity mm -hmm. to the masses to see some great action right. in the grappling arts. Right. Just under two minutes left on the clock. Grace Gundrum still in the bottom here, still trying to Look for an arm or a way out of there yes. to deal with the physical strength of Hikaru Aono. She probably has it. Yes, she has an arm. Arm bar attempt here. She's stepping over to defend yes. it, but Grace has caught the ankle to stop that from happening. If we can see her roll her over, then she'll be in a lot more trouble with that arm caught there. Just over a minute to work this. Aono wants to keep that position. Gunra wants to pull that arm, stretch out. Oh, she got it, she got it. Oh. oh, she's out. One minute. One minute left on the clock. Grace Gundra might be able to slip out here and get the back position. Mm -hmm. Very flexible. Aono pushes wow. down on the back of her neck to stop this. Oh, that's the confident is going to cross body. Ride. Looking for the twister here. 
threatening. He got it all over with the 10 chronic oh, system. This is good. looking very dangerous for dangerous. Team Deep Jules. He got it all over. Can she survive with just 15 seconds left on the clock? Gunner needs to be a little bit more power. It's the strength. There, yeah. If she has enough, she may pull this off in the closing seconds. There's the bell. That was close. Incredibly close bout there in the closing seconds. Mm -hmm. Wow. This bout is a draw because it was not settled within the prescribed time. Both fighters will be up. Another draw means the third member of each team will step up to the mat representing Team 10th Planet, Elvira Karpinen from Finland and Yukari Nabe from Japan. Elvira Karpinen, the Viking spirit grappler representing Team 10th Planet. Tampere in Finland alongside her husband and head coach Laurie Karpinen, who has himself fought in EBI 3. Laurie is a 10th Planet black belt under Eddie and a BJJ black belt under Magnus Hansen. Elvira is a 10th Planet brown belt, Nogi world champion, took fourth place in ADCC Worlds and is an ADCC Europeans champion. She's also a two-time Nogi Europeans champion, Finnish champion seven times, a Naga expert champion, and a veteran of Polaris. Another super high-level grappling show on UFC Fight Pass. Elvira holds a win over ADCC. Competitor Mackenzie Dern in 2017 in Finland, I believe. Keep an eye out for her rubber guard, especially her leg locks, and she's always looking for back takes. Yukari Nabe representing HMC Japan. Well, she joined just two years ago, her MMA record, six and three with one submission. She's coming off a rear naked choke submission victory in Deep Jewels in March. Just oh, last month. Oh, that's a hefty one. There's the leg lock, so it's talking about this attack! Quick work! Elvira Karpinen brings the Viking talent and skill to the quintet mat. Tapping out Yukari Nabe in no time at all. That was very quick. Very quick. And I think that's, a, that's her favorite move there. I was just saying that she is known for that. It is right. not a secret. She right. went straight in there hunting it and she found it. Uh -huh. Take a look at this replay here. Yeah, May there's Yamamichi. already a sit up here and Nabe just wanted to get out of there but too late. Yeah, that's, that's like her signature moves. How do you call this technique in Japanese? Uh, they said ashikubi gatame, but um, it's just normal um, leg lock. You know. Very beautiful it was. Not even breaking a sweat. Elvira Kaplan means business, and she now deals with the fourth member of Team Deep Jewels, Tomo Maesawa. Now, because of the weight difference here, Tomo Maesawa weighed in at 49 kilos. Elvira Karpinen is the heaviest by just a little bit over Liz Karmouche on Team 10th Planet at 64.8 kilograms. So this will be a four minute bout. Tomo Maesawa. Yeah, Tomo is the uh, shortest and lightest in Deep Jewel's team. That's right, yeah, four foot eight. Team Deep Jewel! I think you're taller than her. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I am. She represents 
Reversal Jim Tachikawa Alpha under Demon UFC Demon veteran Demon Masanori Demon Kanehara, Demon who competed Demon in Quintet Demon Fight Night 1 with a win over Demon Victor Demon Henry Demon and a Demon loss Demon to Daisuke Demon Nakamura. Demon he drew Demon with Tomoshige Sera that day, Demon who is also fighting in the special single match right. on today's card. Maesawa did judo from college, then started BJJ with a friend in Aomori Paraestra, where she's originally from. Her MMA record, 12 and 9, two wins by submission, armbar rear naked choke. She fought Mika Nagano actually of Team Sun Chlorella who will be fighting later today. Maisa doing a good job trying not to be in that guard move. Yeah, Maisa has a ton of experience. She's a very savvy fighter and having watched what just happened to her teammate Yukari Nabe, she will yes. not be wanting the same thing. Yes. Doesn't want her leg touched. Maisawa tells me she's very happy to be joining Quintet here today, following in the footsteps of her coach, Kanehara. There's another favorite move of 10th Planet here. Working the rubber guard, mm -hmm. breaking down the posture, pulling oh. her into her game. There's a Triangle attempt already. My Sawa not in any trouble of being submitted with a choke here right now, but it could yes. all go oh. pear shaped very quickly as you can see Elvira Karpinen pulling the arm over. In the elbow across her body there to sink in, close the space. And looking for the yeah, tap. Very strong and technical moves. What should Mayasawa do here to deal with this, May? Um, you know, as she's doing, trying to hold your, her arm not being... Moved here. Um, oh. armbar. Yeah. Threatening the armbar there. Now she's on top. Tightening up that space again. Elvira Karpinen. Tomo Maesawa is a sixth generation deep, uh, deep jewels atom weight champion. She took the title in December just last year. And this is her hometown. Mm -hmm. Tachikawa, so she has a lot of hometown support here today. But right now, that's the furthest thing from her mind. She has Karpinen on top of her. Working that submission. Maisala still trying to defend that triangle or armbar very well. Elvira Karpinen looking to pull that. No and put her in one some more danger. Just one minute left on the clock to work that. Keeping that triangle. Oh. Now look at the straighten out the arm if she can get the thumb up. She'll be doing a lot better, but yeah. Maesawa defending incredibly well uh -huh. so far. She's right, surviving. Right. Yeah. If she can survive, she can take out Karpinen from this. There's the tap! Elvira Karpinen taps out two. Team Deep Jewels Elvira members in a row. Wow, May Yamaguchi, we are witnessing some fine grappling skills yes. here tonight, and we are still early on. Yeah, but my son did a great job defending that until the last moment. And now there's uh, Emi Tomimatsu, the Jujutsu Black Belt, from Deep Drills. Just look at this. Rolled her over. 
Kept that pressure, constantly threatening her. That triangle was on for so many minutes of that bout. Maisawa doing the right thing there, not letting her elbow pop. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that Sakurawa-san always says. He says, don't be afraid to tap. Everybody has very high pride. You know, they don't want to tap out. But if you're in danger and you know... Mm -hmm. It's better than... It's better than being uh, injured. Exactly. And under and this fighting, quintet yeah. team format, you know, you, you might have to go through to the next round. Uh, right. It can all play out in various ways. And so far, Team 10th Planet are dominating under the skills of Finnish competitor Elvira Karpinen. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where things start to change we are now down to the last member of team deep jewels and elvira Karpinen is not fresh right so her conditioning will come into play here yeah she's pretty tired now again because of the weight difference this part will be four minutes long Emi Tomimatsu represents Paraestra in Matsudo here in Japan. Since 2005, she's been affiliated there for a long time. Her MMA record, 14 and 14, with three submission victories. She's coming off a win over her teammate, Hikaru Aono, actually, with a second round rear naked choke just last month. And I believe she's fought you twice. Yes, yeah, she did. She's a really technical grappler very calculated yes Tomimatsu tells me that she got into pro wrestling first of all uh, and then jiu-jitsu and boxing after that she was interested in shooto in high school she wanted to do it but back then there were no female fighters really uh, on the circuit so she got into pro wrestling uh, after graduating from high school she quit pro wrestling and got into women's MMA as it started to grow here in Japan so she joined our Estra training under Tsuru, Tsuru, sorry, Tsuru, 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 yeah. She usually drops about six kilos for MMA, so this was much easier for her today. Oh, she's given her back there. That was a dangerous thing to do with Elvira Karpinen on the attack. Now, Tomimatsu has fought in PXC in Guam. And she is a Rubina Sato fan from way back. She says she wouldn't have watched MMA or got into it without his influence. Mm -hmm. She reckons the Team 10th Planet will be the biggest problem today. And right now, she's feeling it. One hand fight here. Karpinen looking to put in the other foot there, but gave up. She has a crossbody ride right now. She's fighting for position with the hands and arms, trying to isolate the neck of any Tommy Mats. Halfway through this bout. Now, in order to go through to the finals today, Emi Tomimatsu has to submit look for Elvira Karpinen. Unlock. She can't just take a draw and take her out. She has to win by submission. If she does, we still have two more Team 10th Planet yes. competitors waiting by the mat. Mm -hmm. Lila Smaja Cruz and Fabiana George. So you must look very confident in blocking all those uh, choke attempts. Yeah, she's undoubtedly in a bad position here. There's the body lock. Oh. This is pretty bad now for yeah. Tommy Matsu. One minute left in the boat. Yeah, but still there's a space. 
lot of pressure there from the long legs of Karpinen. Yeah. When you have a, the size difference, there's some, sometimes the bigger fighter has a pretty tough time submitting the smaller opponent. That's right. You know, yeah. a, a lot of the competitors say that. Uh -huh. You know, they say that this, the movement, the constant movement and speed and, and technical work of the smaller right. opponents right. gives them a lot of trouble. Because yes. they're used to just, you know, going head to head and smashing yeah. it out <laughs> with bigger opponents. Yeah, and bigger opponent, they, they tend to make more space between the opponents. So that makes it easier for the smaller people to get out of there. Right now, Now we're going to come and get the top again! Wow! Wow. With the chokes from the back. Amazing. Elvira. Thank you, Lenny Hart. Elvira Kalpinen is working for her fight money here tonight. And she has taken her team through to the finals. Right. Beautiful, beautiful work. Beautiful move. You know, even if she didn't have that submission, her team will win, but she didn't, you know, she just went for it until last minute. Watch this, she pulls her hand up. Right. Just feeds the other arm through. So putting the leverage on the choking arm. Yeah, that's a face lock, I think. Very powerful. Yes, look at that. There was no way out of that there mm. for Emi Tomimatsu. Dominant work from Kapinen. The winners of the first match, first round, Team Camp Planet. Big congratulations to Team 10 Planet as they advance through. As they come off the mat now, after some fantastic action, stay with us folks, as the next round comes up here at Quintet Fight Night 3. すごいですね。凄さまじいですね。正直怖いっていうのはありますね。やっぱり世界の撮ってる選手とっていうのは他の分野の人でも誰が見てもすごいって思える技術を持ってる人たちだと思うので、そうなんですよ。もういきなり今
、それからあのリスクを犯さない戦い方をされる方なのでミスをせずに自分のワールドにこう引き込むような、えー、自分の持ってる力を出し尽くしてしつこくネチネチいきたいと思います<笑>塚選手はもともと柔道のトップでやられてた選手で,で私も組んで、まあ、立ちはあの練習しててもかなわないっていう状態で,で寝技もですねあの柔道っぽくない柔術の寝技をされる方ですごく器用なので上からも下からもできる選手だと思いますチームの優勝に向けて一つでも多く勝ちますあと越後選手はふ、まあ、普段から大きい選手ともちろんやってるっていうのもありますしあのまあ、柔術も茶帯なので足関節の練習もしていますしあとは下からの攻撃それからあのバックを取る技術っていうのがあの本人がすごい好きなあの動きなのでそこがしっかり出せれば取ってくれるんじゃないかなっていうところはあります組み手と決まってからは上りの練習もやってきてるので練習してることを出せれば。いいいと思います本当にやっぱ尊敬する選手、今までもいましたけど、このクインテッドを通してやってくれるっていうことは、すごい本当に感謝してます、まあ、年齢的には上なんですけど、この世界に入ってみれば、まだ新人なので、どんどんどんどん上の人からいろんなものを吸収して、あの育って。育ってってる今段階なので。アテネ五輪銀メダリストのサラマクマン選手。まあもう本当にレスリングでピカイチあのとってもパワーのある選手で、えっ、ー、とタックルもそうですし、スピードもパワーもあって、そして、ね、MMA ファイターとしてもすごく活躍して、あのグラッピングはもう私の本当に大先輩です。My motivation for、uh, the quintet is to come back to competition strong. I've been working、um, my jiu jitsu over the past year and I want to put on a really strong showing and I want to、uh, battle test some of the things that I've been working on. Sugimoto 選手 Sugimoto 選手は最近あの産後ファイターとして復活されましたえっと、今回、急遽参戦になったのですが、えっと、ミーさんとサラさんと同じチームで戦えることをとても光栄に思っています、えっと、出るからには全力を尽くすので、えっと、優勝を目指して頑張りたいと思いますで長野美香選手、えっと、レスリングの後輩なんですけど、グラップリングは私の先輩です<笑>もともと,もとバックボーンがレスリングなんですけど、レスリング,のレスリングを生かしつつ、関節技も狙っていって、チームに貢献したいと思います。一人でも、あの関節技を決めれるように。最後はみんなで喜べるように、がん、私も頑張りたいと思います。そして、池本選手、ええー、充実家で、そして。アマチュアクイントで、クインテットでなんと五人抜きをしたという、本当に、あの有望な。心強い選手が揃っております。池本美恵、十四歳です。チームに貢献できるように頑張ります。いろいろとまあ、このチーム自体が、私もグアムにいて、サラもアメリカにいて。で、まとまって練習っていうのができなかったんですけど。でもまあ、あのー、個々に、あの、いろいろ力を持っている選手たちなんで、やっぱ。一緒に集まって、作戦会議をこれからして、あの、望みたいです。ね、五人、まあ、私も含めて、五人。かその全員違う戦い方をすするんですよねみんな立ちが強かったり下が強かったり、あのー、足感ができたりそれから守りが強かったりみんながみんな柔術なんだけどちょっと違う柔術っていうところは、うん、私のチームで一番見てほしいところ。
Another very exciting lineup here, Ray Yamaguchi. Yes. Team Sun Chlorella. The name Sun Chlorella comes from their sponsor, which is, I believe, a supplement out here yeah, in yeah. Japan. The supplement. No, overall, yeah. we're the wrestling base, but that's not the one dimension to this team. There's much more to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Facing Team Sun Corella in our second match of the evening is Team BJJ Kunoichi. Kunoichi comes from where? Okay. Kunoichi is a woman's version name of Ninja. Ah, Kunoichi is woman female, ninja. Woman yeah, female, ninja. female ninja. Fantastic name. Yeah. And they all come out in their dogi. Overall, a much more focused on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu technique team. But having right. said that, they are facing some incredible competition in Team San Florella. Yes, the wrestling elite team. Uh, Rika Koyuasa, a very big BJJ star out here in Japan. She is the leader of this team. Right. But uh, she is placed third in their order. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this plays out. Senpo is a Yuki Sugiuchi versus Miyu Mikimoto. They take a bow and come off the mat preparing for this first bout. In the second round here, Sugiuchi of Team BJJ Kunoichi weighed in at 51 kilograms. Ikemoto, just 14 years of age. She's not 15 until next month. She weighed in at 54 kilograms. So not much difference there. Ikemoto uh, from Tatoru in Kumamoto, which is way down southwest Japan. It's her first time to Tokyo. Yeah. She's very starstruck. Mm -hmm. She's not quite sure what to make of everything going on. <laughs> 
Un Quintet, her base is judo from elementary fourth grade. She started jujits from elementary sixth grade, uh, which she still does today with her older brother. She got into it because the teacher is very kind and she loves learning new things every training session. Very pure reasons. She took first place in the 2018 Fukuoka International Jiu-Jitsu Championship in the adult division, I believe, as a white belt. Took the open class first place and also first places in the 2018 Kyushu Jiu-Jitsu Championships in the adult white belt, lightweight, sorry, light featherweight division and open class. She submitted a whole team in amateur quintet in, sorry, in February this year. She told me she didn't think she could, but she felt very confident on the day. She won four of those by rear naked choke. She said she looks up to Miyu Yamamoto, her team leader. Sugiuchi of Pogona Club Gym from three years ago. She joined there. She's a 2010 Jules Grappling Tournament champion, defeating Team Deep Jules, Emi Tomimatsu, in the final. She already has the triangle position here. Yep. Ikemoto, ah, she's not locked it on, but Ikemoto feeling the pressure. It's the arm bar attempt. There's the arm. She's stepping over. She's not tapping yet. She's, oh, she's in a really bad spot here now. Can she deal with this early on? Yeah, Shigemoto wants to pull. There's the oh, tap. Okay. Young Ikemoto yeah. forced. Good. Out by Yuki Sugiuchi. A technician, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's a veteran. She was telling me that she has a little bit of pressure facing this young fighter. Yeah, there's a lot of hype behind her. Right. And although young Ikemoto will be disappointed, she has a very bright career ahead of her. Yes. For sure. She comes off the mat. Yuki Sugiuchi takes a sip of some water and talks with her team. Here's the yeah, replay. For, uh -huh. A little bit loose here, but Sugimoto, she pulled, pulled arm, thumb up, and here's the tap. Yeah, she managed to adjust and get it in deeper right. just right. at the end there. Well, the quintet debut of young Miyu Ikemoto didn't go in her favor, but fantastic to see her competing at this level. And <laughs> next up, representing Team Sun Chlorella is Megumi Sugimoto. This is another interesting match here. Oh, sorry, did I say Sugimoto? Sugi... Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's a Sugi Uchi. That's right, yes. Sorry. Sugi Uchi versus... Versus Megumi. Yes, Sugi Moto. Sugi Moto. <laughs> Sugi All the Sugis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Sugi Moto is another wrestling elite. <laughs> Megumi Sugi Moto represents AACC <laughs> under head coach and husband, Abe San, the older of the Abe brothers. She was there in 2012. She has a solid wrestling base. MMA, just a short career of two and one to date. Yes, she just came back after having uh, two, two kids. That's right, yeah. She took third place in the 2011 All Japan Wrestling. Second place in the Intercollegiate, the same year, I believe. Says her first and last MMA fights have been the hardest to date. And she's already in some trouble. Oh, very Could we see beautiful. another armbar victory here from Sugiuchi? Sugimoto trying to get out. Oh, beautiful. Wow, another beautiful, quick, technical submission mm. from Yuki Sugiuchi. She is storming into this first match here in the second round of the tournament here tonight. Taking out two members in a row of Team Sun Chlorella with the same technique. Yes. 
伸ばしましたね。あそこで水泳選手と並行しました。This yeah. one was much deeper from the start. All she had to adjust was the wrist and, right. and the angle slightly getting the yeah. thumb up in order to get the leverage on the elbow. Yes, Sugiuchi, so she didn't miss the timing to roll her, her over when uh, Sugimoto put too much weight on forward. Beautiful work. Forward, yes. Watch her pop her hips up there just at the end. Putting on far too much pressure on the elbow of Megumi Sugimoto, forcing her to tap early on. Still looking very fresh mm -hmm. is BJJ Kunoichi Yuki Sugiuchi. She is, remember, the, still the first okay. of this team to come out, so she, they have the advantage already. Yeah, and in the next match, this is really interesting because Mika Nagano, she is really good in armbar too. That's right. Uh, Nagano is the Jules Stone GP 2009 champion. She took out every single member of that tournament by armbar. Yes. And a very good wrestling background too. Yeah, and she has a lot of submissions on her MMA record. Her right. MMA is uh, 16 and 11, but 13 of those wins are by submission. 12 by armbar, one by rear naked choke. She took Miyu Yamamoto, her teammate to a judge decision on New Year of last year. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, sorry. Nagano is known for her tenacity. Already trying to pull the arm in is BJJ Kunouchi Senpo Yuki Sugiuchi. Now Nagano tried to pass it, but Suguchi pulled it back again. Now it's getting tight. She's got the triangle, and there's another tap! She takes a third, sorry, third arm Amazing. with her today. <laughs> all her yeah. teammate is laughing. That is all I'm not going to fight tonight. <laughs> Oh, kicking off yeah. here tonight at Quintet Fight Night 3. I told you at Quintet Fight Night 2. Quintet Fight Night 3 was the place to be. And I do not joke about these things. Yuki Sugiuchi, victorious again. Take a look at this replay, May. Yeah, usually if, if uh, Nagano passes, right, this point, it's easy to just pass it, but, you know, Sugiuchi's really good just pulling it back. Well, that's exactly what she was trying to do. She was yeah. trying to just spin around there, get away from danger, but she got pulled into that triangle. And yeah. then, her, with her arm left in there, it was all Sugiuchi's. Three arm bars in a row, Mei Yamaguchi. This is devastating for Team Sun Florella. Mm -hmm. Sarah McMahon up next, the biggest and unquestionably the strongest on right. this team. She is going to be an absolute handful for mm -hmm. Yuki Sugiuchi. In fact, for any member of the BJJ Kunoichi team, without a doubt. Sarah McMahon representing Team Alpha Male. She's coming in very close to her natural weight. She usually cuts 235 pounds, but she has a four-month-old baby at the moment, so that is not in question. Her MMA record, 11 and 5. Five of those wins by submission. Watch out for her arm triangle. She holds a win over Shayna Baszler in the main event of Invicta FC2 in 2012. She fought Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, Amanda Nunes, and a whole list of top level experienced opponents. Oh. McMahon is the 2004 the Olympic silver medal wrestling. Oh, it's getting tight. Holder, and she oh, is turning on a lot of business. There's the chance oh, Sarah McMahon makes oh, quick work. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that looks ridiculously easy, May Yamaguchi. Yeah. <laughs> Fast. 
McMahon joins us here today for the first time, says she loves Quintet's unique concept of different weight classes facing each other and loves the submission-only format, which she usually doesn't get to compete in under jiu-jitsu or wrestling or MMA rules. Look at this, look at this setup here, just straight in there. She didn't even use the leg. Tightened it up, yeah, high pulled elbow. Up. Oh, wow. Incredible work from Sarah McMahon there, still obviously fresh, and she is pulling this match back in the favor of her team. But she will now have to deal with Akiko Sawada, the second member of this team. In fact, if, if she's to make any headway, she's got to take out quite a few of these members. Yeah. Well, Sawada is really good in defending any of the submissions, so this will be very interesting too. Still, there is a weight difference, which means four minutes on the clock for this bout. Akiko Sawada versus Sarah McMahon. Quintet Fight Night 3, the action continues as we make history before your very eyes. Sawada represents Sasa BJJ. Beautiful takedown. Just powers straight into side position, Sarah McMahon. Sawada has competed in the 2017 and 18 All Japan BJJ Championships, took second and third place respectively at Purple Belt. Her bread and butter is arm bars and chokes, so watch out for them. But right now, she is being dominated by Sarah McMahon, the UFC veteran herself. McMahon already has an arm in triangle. Sarah McMahon tells me she trains a lot with guys, so smaller opponents, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. may could be tricky for her because yes. by necessity they offer yes. a very technical and speedy. Oh, here it is right now. The tap. It's all over. Sarah McMahon continues to dominate, and she's not tired at all. <laughs> She's still fit. It just took her one minute 20 in that boat to take out Akiko Sawada with the arm triangle. And let's see who's coming next. Well, yeah, we have a star right yes. now who is unlikely to get tapped out just as easily. Take a look yeah. at this replay here, May. That's a really beautiful takedown. Watch this. Just straight into the ankle pick. Boom. Side position. Yeah, this was already deep. There was into no the, escaping yeah. that. Full mount. All her body weight cinched it up. Yes. And it looks like Sarah's chewing gum. <laughs> she better not let the referees see that. They're incredibly strict <laughs> about these things. Rikako Yuasa. Let's see here. Now there's some stirring from the crowd here. They know Rikako Yuasa. Uh -huh. They know what she's <laughs> capable of. Although she's smaller than Sarah McMahon, she is incredibly talented, right. incredibly skilled. And I said um, she's a three times world champion, but. Actually, it's four. Wow. Yeah. It's four. Rika Koyoasa representing Paraestra. Shinagawa Sasa BJJ, the IBJJJF World Championship 2016, 17, and 18. Black belt first place holder. Powering in again is Sarah McMahon. Scramble there, receives a round of applause from the crowd here in the arena, Tachi Kawatachi. Perfect defense from Rikako. 
Nico with the feet up onto the hips there. Immediately recognizing this, Sarah McMahon grabs the ankles and starts threatening the left leg of Yuasa. Yuasa controlling the head. Pulling down the posture of McMahon is Mikako Yuasa. Now, this could be the turning point in this matchup between these two teams, May. Yes. Because Mikako Yuasa, if she can take out, if she can even just survive or mm -hmm. tap out Sarah McMahon, she has a, a huge grappling advantage over the last team member Sun of Team Sun, Sun Chlorella, Mio yeah. Yamamoto, who is an incredibly good wrestler, uh, but not with the BJJ experience of Yuasa. Mm -hmm. Yuasa chooses to take the side position there when they reset, attacking the neck of Sarah McMahon, both hooks in. Sarah McMahon fight there. McMahon on the defense now. Mikako has a hook. She's let her body weight slide over to the side, which suggests she's looking for the arm of Sarah McMahon. Oh. Oh, triangle. wow. Look at that. She's got a oh. tap. Mikako Yuasa takes the tap from Sarah McMahon. Beautiful technique. Taking out the bigger opponent here. Team San Florella. In a whole world of trouble now, Mei Yamaguchi. Oh my god. Yuasa showing her skills, showing her dominance. Her technique unquestionable. Take a look at this replay here, Mei. So it was looking like the arm, it was looking like the triangle, but mm -hmm. she was after that arm. Yes. Stretched out. Quite see from the angle there, yes. but yeah, she took that elbow over with her mm -hmm. and just cracked it out. Yeah, and they started from that back position because there was a warning. That's right. To McMahon. That's right. So the advantage there given to Rikako Yawasa. Right. From that. Yes. Yeah, so Rikako had a is it luck there. Most of the competitors choose. There's three choices they can uh -huh. choose from for the, the referee start. Uh, and most of them choose that, of course, because right. it's, it's, a, it's the quickest way to the back. Yes. And as soon as you have the back of somebody, all the high percentage, percentage submissions mm -hmm. are there. Now it's all down. The pressure is all on Miyu Yamamoto here. She is the last, the fifth and final of the quintet team, team San Florella. Miu Yamamoto representing team Crazy B, Spike 22. Miu is a three-time wrestling team world team champion. She's four and three in MMA, still young in her career, currently on a three-fight win streak, including a win over her teammate, Mika Nagano, on New Year's Eve. She's a massive star out here in Japan due to her wrestling achievements and her family's wrestling heritage. Her son, Erson, also raised with wrestling and MMA. They've both fought on the same card, mother and son, before, and her late brother, Kid Yamamoto, of course. Rest in peace, who himself arguably changed the face of JMMA and inspired a whole generation of fighters out here. Going to work very quickly from the bottom here, pulling down the posture of Yamamoto is Yuasa. Yuasa, she already has the arm of Miyu Yamamoto. She's isolated that right arm. And Miu has shown in the past that her armbar defense has let her down. I'm sure she's worked on this a lot coming in here today. Wait. The referee Wait. stands them up. Back at it. Eight minute bout, of course. And so far, one minute has elapsed on the clock. Mew's wrestling and control is very, very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Iwasa. No chase in that submission. In BJJ, Iwasa plays open guard and lasso guard uh, very well due to her head coach, Yuki Nori Sasa. She joined yeah. judo in junior high school, did some wrestling, started jujitsu from 17 years old, influenced by Hoist Gracie in Pride, and she she loved it, the MMA grappling. She says she respects Michelle Nicolini of Checkmark, who is a black belt under Robert Drysdale. Yeah, so this is uh, Yuasa's favorite position. And Yamamoto also really good in passing that, that guard using the good good balance of a wrestler. In pressure with her head from the top there. Not phasing Yuasa. And the referee stops them. Not seeing enough action. Back to the parter position. Yamamoto receiving one shido. So that means um, Yuasa was trying to look for submission from the bottom a lot, but Yamamoto, she, she wasn't moving enough to pass the guard. That's right, just putting pressure on yes. the top is not enough. She has to be chasing yes. submissions. They have to be chasing down submissions at right. all times. There's no point for keeping position at all. Oh, the power of Miyu Yamamoto <laughs> there, just throwing Yuasa off her back. And now into the guard of the BJJ technician herself. Yeah, that's like a surprising move for pure Jujutsu people. Oh, she got the this arm. arm. She got you got the arm, Yuasa but... looking for oh. the arm bar. Still, still, she has it. Full on survival mode here from Miyu Yamamoto. She's been in this position before in her uh -huh. MMA bouts and it has not worked out well for her. Let's see if she can defend this. And she does out of there. Excellent work from the wrestler. Look at the pass guard immediately. That was a very quick reaction of Yamamoto. Pushing down the feet onto the mat. Yes. Again, so threatening the arm bar yes. is Yuasa. Look at how calm and collected her face is, breathing through her nose. Mm. She is used to high level competition. It's just a beautiful thing to watch, the work right. of Rika Koyuasa. Yes, the transition of all the techniques and positions. You can see her, her calm and collected face. She's flicking through all of the different right. options and possibilities in her yeah. mind, looking for the arm, looking for the leg, looking to sweep. It's mm -hmm. all, all there in the memory banks. So Yamamoto just need to keep Keep defending it. But Yuasa, she's waiting for Yamamoto to make a mistake. Yamamoto cannot let this go full right. time. Right. Because they will lose. And BJJ Kunoichi will proceed to the finals. She has to. Keep the pressure on and look for a submission. On your ass up, both fighters receiving Shido here. Yamamoto now has two Shidos, one more, and she'll be DQ'd. Shoots in! 
Looks like USL was waiting for that shoot. Straight back to attacking the arm is USA. What can you Yamamoto do here to deal with this attack on the arm? USA trying to pull that elbow up, get it a little bit tighter so she can get the leverage. Just controlling it. Oh. And the turn on the armbar from an incredible competitor. Beautiful. Rika Koyuasa. By armbar. Six minutes, 18 into that bout, and Rika Koyuasa wins for her team, keeping two members still fresh mm -hmm. for the finals. Yes. Look at this, May. She stays on her, yeah. constantly hunting that arm. The elbow was in deep. Of course, she knew it was coming. Mm. There was nothing she could do right, to stop right. it there. Just too quick, too tight, yes, too technical. Yes, very, very quick transition because Rikako doesn't stop here. This beautiful arm bar. Rikako Yuasa, incredibly persistent. She does not stop until she gets that good feeling of the tap out. There we have it, folks. Team BJJ Kunoichi. Proceed to the finals to face Team 10th Planet. Stay with us as the action continues. We have two special single matches coming right up for your grappling pleasures. Winter Fight Night 3! あ、すいません、皆さん、あの、1回戦いかがでしたでしょうか。すいません。えっと、男子のワンマッチ、ポニシャイと女子の決勝がありますので、楽しんでください。楽しみにしてください。あ、そうだ。えっと、前回ですね、あの、ここでやったクリケットであの優勝したチームカルペディーヌのあのメダルやっとできてきたのでそれを今日ここで上げたいと思いますのでちょっと待ってください。あ、そうだ。あの、メダ
the fantastic star and Ghanaian representing Team Carpe Diem. Haysam Rida comes up to the match. Congratulations on your win in Quintet Fight Night 2. Please train with me in the future. Sakurava-san with his award ceremony music. <laughs> Rarely a serious moment from Kazushi Sakuraba. So much fun. And the creator of such a fantastic team format grappling tournament. Putting all the medal for his teammate. Hi, Sam Rita. Who's not here today. Receives all five. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody watching out there, if you did not see Quintet Fight Night 2 just two months ago, go back to the archives on UFC Fight Pass and watch it. It was, as always, a thing of beauty. Some words from Rida himself. Thank you always for your support. Please. Call me up to Quintet again. Us. Quintet Fight Night 2. Team champions. A representative burst onto the scene, stormed onto the grappling scene last year. Hi, Sam Rita from Quintet 2. He gave Team 10th Planet. I have a lot of trouble facing Richie Boogeyman Martinez, only to be tapped out by his brother, Gio Martinez. That was a fantastic event. Another one to go back to the archives and watch if you haven't seen it. And for your viewing pleasures, Kazushi Sakuraba has decided to pull in one of the referees again for an exhibition match. This is where Sakuraba is in his element. He's checking. He's doing a body check <laughs> on Miki. I believe he did the exact same thing last time he pulled Miki in for an exhibition match. Let's see how the fun unfolds here today. In the background here, live in the arena, you can hear the voices of the commentators, one of which is Yuki Nakai. Legend in MMA and BJJ out here in Japan. Sakuraba looking for the arm bar. Sakuraba rolls up and stacks. Going to pull him round with the ankle here. <laughs> and into side position. Something to be said about Sakuraba, mate. He's, he's yeah. always having so much fun. Uh -huh. When he competes, when he trains, he trains hard, he's always trained hard, he's always fought hard, he's faced some absolute monsters in his time. For the most part of his career, facing guys way out of his weight class. 
And due stop to the girls. Never done it himself. Hats off to the man for a number of reasons. Kazushi Sakuraba. He just loves to wrestle and grapple. It's really fun to watch this. He is. Oh, there's a tap from Mickey. De La Hiva <laughs> from Sakuraba there. De La Hiva, good luck. Mickey, Mickey jumps straight in. <laughs> Sakuraba getting tired. Yeah, he's going to capitalize on his senpai getting tired, looking for the arm now. Can Mickey get one back? Switches. Transition now. To the triangle gives that up. Mm. Attacking the leg again. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Sakuraba getting tired. On the arm to the leg. Back to the leg. Kazushi Sakuraba. Trying to look for arm bar. He's got both legs of Mickey. <laughs> What's out of Mickey having to deal with it? <laughs> Here's the bell. <laughs> the end of our exhibition match here. Kazushi <laughs> Sakuraba. Exhausted. But as always, a big smile on his face. Yeah. Big round of applause from everybody here in the arena, of course. No winner in this exhibition match, but just a little bit of halftime fun for everyone. He says, sorry. I, I tried, but he's getting stronger. He's going to be fighting in Shuto at the end of May. And I wish him all the best. It's been a while since Wataru Miki fought in the yeah. He says, everybody, yeah, like enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Big round of applause here for Kazushi Sakuraba. Live on UFC Fight Pass Quintet Fight Night 3. Stay with us, folks, as we head into our two special single matches and then on to the finals of the evening. You're listening to Stuart Fulton and May Yamaguchi. This is Quintet Fight Night 3. ま、あの、本当に団体戦の中のま、2試合しか組まれないあの、シングルマッチなので、とてもあの、今までの活躍が評価されてるんじゃないかなと思ってとても嬉しかったです。ああいう戦い方がま、自分の戦い方なので、い
ぶれたくないから見渡まあ,あの柔道以外にもいろいろサンボとかコンバットレスリングだったり、えー、まあいろんなアマチュアの大会とかに出てきてますんで、まあ、そういういろんな格闘技のいい面が出てるっていうのはあると思います。あのその前にあの近鉄レスリーやってましてすごくあの楽しくてマネージャーの人に言って、まあ、出たい出たいなんかで言ってたんですけどで近鉄出ないですかで連絡して出ましたってで言って。始めた時にずっと君もう好き方なのでだからポイントがないから君しかないから僕の技術見たいから手を持ってすごい出たいんですよ。ね、え最近がオモプラタの三角決めとあと木村最近がよく使っているから今回も。使ってみましょうあの同じ階級の、まあ、黒帯で、まあ、私も柔術の黒帯なんで、まあ、いつか柔術やってたら当たるんじゃないかなと、まあ、意識してた選手でグラップリング今回当たるっていうことで、まあ、強くしてていただいて、まあ、嬉しいなと思います。出花のことがえっとまあ強い人でみんな言ってるからさあと力まあ、フィジカルが強いで、あの出花の動きがあの呪術のパターンじゃないですよね。まあ、ぐるぐる回ったりとか、決め行ったりとか、あのあれ、柔道みたいの肩っぽいで固めてるからじゃないですよね。まあ、いろいろ動いてるとか、だからそのお互いにまあ、すごい楽しみにやってみます。一本で決めるっていう、やっぱりクインテットのスタイル。でまあ、戦いたいといまあお互いそういう戦いすれば、まあ、決着はつくのかなと思ってます。
Ivana is an All Japan Judo Championships. Now, Athens Olympic finalist, taking third place in 2004. He's also competed in professional World Jiu Jitsu Cup Asian trials and competed on the Judo Dream Team in Quintet One, our inaugural show. He fought Sakuraba to a draw after eight minutes of a very intense action. Dipana constantly looking for armor. He also competed in Quintet by night two in February this year, taking a 12 second flying armbar win over Minoa Man. Then an Ezekiel choke over Hideo Tokuro. He went on to draw with legend Tsuyoshi Kosaka, taking a skilled and experienced heavyweight out of the equation in that team quintet survival match watch out for his arm bars from all positions including his very strong scarf hold arm bar Hobson from Brazil a black belt under Renato Silva has been doing BJJ for 12 years now representing in fight Japan a gym home to Pancras fighters and referees likewise He's at grappling tournament Newaza Mania out here in Tokyo. Uh, winner in their first, second, and third shots. There's the armbar already from Debana. Hobson scrambling out of there, surviving very well. That was that looking was amazing, dangerous. amazing, yeah. Hobson is pretty famous in Japan and Asia area for his uh, strong submission. That's right, yeah. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't mess around. He's constantly mm -hmm. looking for the submission. He started BJJ through a friend. And he tells me he has huge respect for Cobrinha, Nogueira, and Marcelo Garcia. If you want to be careful of this uh, Dibana's Yeah, working the, the yes. crucifix on top, he might be able to... Mm -hmm. He's already isolated the left arm. Right, looking for the arm bar. He's, um, he's just so tricky. Yes, and his balance from judo is uh, pretty hard to break it. I'm always impressed with the way Dibana hides submissions through other submissions. Right. So he's, it looks like he's doing one thing and then suddenly something else mm -hmm. goes on. Because he's isolating one arm already. Tanno, calm and collected, but he is obviously dealing with some incredible pressure here mm -hmm. from Captain Africa. Do you know why he's called Captain Africa? I think he used to work in Africa for a few years. So when he fight for MMA, his name is Captain Africa. He's such a nice guy as well. Whenever you talk to him, full of smiles, really, really light-hearted and positive. Break! Set up. Referee breaks them up. Time stop. Time, Time stop. stop. And a Shido given to Hobson Tano. Hobson Tano is in the standard position. So this boat was set at a weight limit of 77 kilograms. Hobson Tanno just slightly under Shutaro Debano. Nothing in it really. Again, back to work. Isolating that arm is Debana. Just a, a classic, classic strong grappling style from Dibana. He mm -hmm. first controls the movements. Right. He controls the movements of his opponents right. first. Then he looks for the submission. Uh -huh. Not being just aggressive. That's right, yeah. Not just blindly right. uh, bar barging in for the submission, you know. Very, very calculated. <laughs> and procedural. Oh. No, Tano is on the attack. Pulling down the posture of Debana, he has that arm in there. This is very dangerous for Shutaro Debana. Walking up the triangle choke. 
Devana trying to push his right knee into any space possible between the legs of Hobson Tano, but so far. Now let's see how pressure is tight because Devana still has his arm not drag that's right yeah, yeah. He, he has it he has the elbow over to the right, left and right. he has space to breathe as long he, as he can put the pressure in uh tano's hip he can survive he can also use the the tactic of working a shido if, if he can right. if he can stall a little bit he'll receive a shido which is not good for him in the long run if it goes to uh full time limit but mm. it might get them stood up and into a uh, referee starting position. Yes. Lugano wants to keep the balance. But Tano trying to break it down. Impressive defense here from Shutaro Debana. Mm -hmm. And under so much pressure, keeping his head, keeping calm, focusing on his breathing, right. not getting too excited. Now Devana isolated one arm of Tano. That's definitely working in his favor. Ah, look, there's lots of space there. He's pushing his right, fist right, in right. now to that gap and opening up the triangle. Let's see if he can open this up fully and yeah, go on the attack like again. The triangle is getting a little bit looser. Here we go, he's out. And the scramble is on. Hobson Tano taking the standing position. Looking to pass the guard of Shutaro Devana. <laughs> Two minutes left on the clock. As Tano tries to force his way through the guard of Devana. Devana is always on the top, so it's kind of interesting how he does from the bottom. I thought he was going to start working the spider guard there, but right. he managed to get enough space to stand up. The referee stops them. And back at it. The arm drag there from Devana. Doesn't manage to get round, but still on the offense. I know, trying to pull him Very over, nice. but ends up in a really bad position here. Again with that arm on one side, isolated. Cruci crucifix from the top here, Devana now working Devana the left arm. Devana is such good at isolating the arm. One minute left in the bout. Yeah, he just goes straight to it as soon right. as he can. And it's normally quicker than his opponents uh -huh. can react to. It's not like isolating after he passes, he's isolating and pass. Just 40 seconds left on the clock here. Can Devana pull off another armbar victory? There's the top! Oh. Shudano Devana dominates! Hobson Tano in this special single match here at Quintet Fight Night 3. Always a pleasure to watch. That is beautiful. Seven minutes, 28 seconds, so just over, just over 30, 32 seconds left on the clock. Yeah. He managed to pull it off. Let's take a look at the replay here, mate. Yeah, this is beautiful. Nice. Yeah, you see here, he closed up the space first and then go for the arm bar. Yeah, he didn't rush in there, and he would have right. known that there wasn't much time left on the clock. Yeah. But still, he didn't rush in yes. and made sure he set it very up first. Very calm, very calm. Because usually, if you if you try to get the arm bar quick, you, you kind of create this space. It can be clumsy, yeah. right? Right, right. Seven minutes, 28 into that boat. 
The winner of this special single match, Shutaro Devana. Quintet Fight Night 3 continues on. そうですね、あの時は本当かなり動,動けた方ですね。<笑>まあ、日本の,その総合格闘技の中でもすごいトップの選手たちとたくさん試合ができて本当に自分の中でも楽しい試合でした本当に良かったです。そうですね、まだワンマッチで組んでいただいたんで、まあ、やっぱ勝つっていうのはも,うもちろんですけど、まあ、あんまり意識しない方がいいんですよ、まあ、結果的にすごい見応えがあった、すごい面白かった試合になればいいなと。月がシュート、初代ウェルター級チャンピオンの渡辺雄一で、自分がその長男で、シュートっていう名前をそのままつけられました。最初、柔道を小学校の時やらされてでその後まあレスリングに転向したんですけど父はそのままレスリングで、まあ、あのオリンピックとか目指してほしかったみたいで総合格闘技やりたいって自分が言った時は反対されましたね。ね正直言っちゃうと、まあ、セラ選手柔術家でもうこのグラップリングとかも,もう専門分野でしかも,もうトップ中のトップの選手なんでもうどう考えてもやっぱ彼の方セラ選手の方がまあ上なんて<笑>もう嘘じゃないんで自分で強がりってもしょうがないんでもう絶対上なんですよ彼の方がまあね現場笛だったら僕は有利かもしれないですけど僕自身はそういうことあんま考えずにもう,もう今までの敵と変わりなくただ全力でぶつかっていくだけですただ、試合ってその強いやつが勝つんじゃなくて勝ったやつが強いんで自分はセラ選手ってすごいこの業界でトップ中のトップの選手と戦えることにすごいワクワクしてますしチャンスだと思ってますし、まあ、バック取るのうまいなっていうのが印象バック取ってからのあと超がうまいっていうのがそう印象でしたね。すごい、まあ早くてまあ、特に別に技はこだわらずその時取れるものを取っていこうと思います総合の試合とかでも、ね、17勝してるんですけどもほとんど一本勝ちなんでやっぱり決めですよね自分その中でもチョーク得意なんで、まあ、どっかでチョーク捕まえたいなって思ってます、はい、そうですねまああんまり膠着しないでおこうっていうのはちょっと意識して動きますやっぱりこう指導とかが怖いんで、もう決めるとかどこでも決めますね、僕は、もう腕でも、首でも、してどこでも、もうその時決めるも、決めに行きます。渡辺修斗選手の入場です。Second of two special single matches here tonight at Quintet Fight Night 3. Set at a weight limit of 70 kilograms. Both fighters weighing in just under that. Coming out first, Shuto Watanabe. 
is MMA record 17-4 and 6. Nine of those wins by submission, eight by rear naked choke, one by guillotine. He represents Grapple Shin Yurigaoka and fighting Nexus under Yamada-san. He's been there since 2014. The head coach, Hida-san. Watanabe is the first generation fighting Nexus bantamweight champion, taking the title in December last year. Also won the UWW World Grappling Championships at 62 kilograms and won the World Combat Wrestling Championships at 68 kilograms. No weight cut virtually for him here today. His name, Shuto, as he mentioned, was given to him by his father, one of the original old school Shuto fighters. Now, please welcome from Japan. Sarah was on the Quintet Fight Night 1 winning team alongside killers now, like Masahiro Iwasaki and match. David Garmo. Eight minutes on the clock for this part. Watch out for Sarah's armbar attacks, guillotines, and special attacks from the bottom position. He reckons it's going to be a scramble and lots of movement today because Watanabe is generally the smaller of the two and very fast, so it's going to be hard work. Sarah also tells me he would like to face Gio Martinez or Eddie Cummings at some point in his career. Watanabe, he looks up to Masato from K1, who is now retired. And watching his fight, although kickboxing, it inspired him to train and fight also. Action! Just over 30 seconds elapsed here, both still in the wrestling stand. Sera decides to sit down, but Watanabe choosing not to engage, meaning the referee stands them up. Sera trying to find the right position there to get in close and pull him in. Watanabe having none of it. Cartwheels over. Although Sarah is trying to attack here, if he's not able to pull Watanabe in, he could receive a Shido. Yeah. So Watanabe trying to pass the guard, but not closing the distance too much. Trying to pass the guard of somebody like Sarah is not an easy task. Right. Pull him into half guard or full guard. And there we have the time stop. The referee will dish out a shido to both competitors. One each. Just under two minutes elapsed so far in this special 
single match. Stay with us, folks. After this, we will go straight into the Quintet Fight Night 3 finals. Team BJJ Kunoichi versus Team Ted Planet. The action is exciting as always. Game with the cartwheel over, but not managing to close that distance, as you said, mate. It's all about closing that gap. Right. Getting in nice and tight. What's Sarah trying to do there? I thought he was trying to sweep, but he was also threatening the arm. Mm -hmm. I think he just wants to control the arm. Bellatab is seems pretty powerful. Strong in that position, pushing his Sarah. And he pulls out of the grip. Good action. Of Tomoshiki Sera. Very impressed how Shuta Watanabe's hair matches his uniform. <laughs> and, uh, fancy color there. Have you ever thought about doing that? Um, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm stopping. Stop. Stop. The taping on the back calf of Shuta Watanabe needing taken off. I'm not sure why he's choosing to wear that tape what? for Yeah, this maybe um, for the fashion. Probably. Yeah, I would say that's probably yeah. about the only real reason you could give. Sarah, Sarah working the Z guard here. Trying to pull him in to half. <coughs> Sarah looking nice. for the back there. Does not manage to get it? Now we're, we're just over halfway here and he's threatening the neck of Watanabe. Looks a little bit tight. Yeah, even if he doesn't get the tap here, he has a very dominant position and yes. he, can, he can work a number of things here, uh, including, of course, the neck. And controlling the posture on the bottom of Shuta Watanabe. Difficult to see from this angle here, May. What do you expect Sarah is doing? Um, yeah, looking for some choke. Yeah, he threatened the neck there and stepped right. over into mount, but he's now ended up with the reverse triangle position. Uh -huh. Now looking for the arm. <laughs> this and is a whole the... world of trouble for Shuto Watanabe. Once you are in the grips of Tomoshige Sera in this position, you have to do absolutely everything to get out of there. And he is struggling. Yeah, this smooth transition of the Jiu-Jitsu fighters, it's always giving trouble to MMA-based people. Yeah, because as they, of course, train grappling no gi, there's so many other factors in their training. Right, it's Not right. quite the same. There's the triangle attempt. Going in for, from Sarah. It's getting deep. I'm looking for the... Trying to push the elbow over to tighten it up. Tomoshige Sera now focused on the submission with just two minutes left on the clock. The first half of this bout was a little bit of a stalemate. They couldn't really find right. their pace and position, but now the attack is yeah, all from Carpe He's Diem Sera. Looking for the arm lock and arm bar. Depending on how Watanabe moves. Oh, there's a tap! Tomoshige Sara with the triangle choke. 
representing Beautiful. his team again and again. Team Carpe Diem, Yamaguchi, they are incredibly dominant out here. Yes. Arguably the top gym for grappling and BJJ out uh -huh. here in Japan, not just in Tokyo. Right, right. Um, well, beautiful, beautiful technique, transition. Mm -hmm. They are the top fighters in Japan, Carpe Diem. Let's take a look at the replay here. He was working that for quite a while. Uh -huh. So now the triangle was getting deeper and deeper as Watanabe moves. Sarah was attacking the arm too, but creating that triangle at the same time. And it all started with the reverse triangle position, right? which is where he originally pulled him in. Yeah, so like most of the, uh, when it goes to MMA, there's a lot of time, time uh, chances to get out the reversal of triangle, but not against the Jujutsu fighters. Yeah, they will keep pulling you in and keep transitioning right, to the very next Very tight. Six minutes 28 into that bout by way of Sankakujime or Triangle Choke. Representing Carpe DM Tomoshige Sera, big congratulations.
きましてチーム d j j くの一の入場です
It's a nice scramble. There she go trying to pull Smaja Cruz in there. I just heard someone calling out there, it's okay for the draw. They, they would like mm -hmm. to see uh, one of the kingpins here of Team 10th Planet, Lila Smaja Cruz, taken out one way or the other. Uh, Referee calling for action, trying to keep them moving. Look at the pass guard, Smaja Cruz. Echigo able to create lots of space there, but the posture of Smaja Cruz is doing a lot of favors back on their feet. Both of them need to be a little more aggressive looking for the submission. That's right. I just heard Eddie Bravo in the background there saying aggression, move forward. Right. Putting pressure on the legs from the top, Lila. And she goes, still trying to pull her in to the half guard game. Looking quite serious now is Lila Smaja Cruz. Time stop. The referee, uh, hands out. Shido to each of these two. Is it just me, May, or is Lila looking a little bit frustrated now? Yeah. And I think um, Ichigo's corner is saying the same thing. Ah, I think I heard them say that. Yep. Very frustrated. Just coming up to the halfway point of this bout. So far, a stalemate. Neither of the two managing to find the dominant position. Threatening the ankle, the toe hold from Smaja Cruz. to see what she can do with this. Yeah, but Ichigo is very good at putting weight, defending on that. And exactly that she did. Very nice move. Very good balance. Now trying to pull that leg, passing the guard, half guard. Magic Cruz has the underhook on the left hand side mm -hmm. here. She's finding her neck being threatened, but to no avail, she manages to use that to her favor and step into side position. Let's see if she can tighten this up and start to work the sub. Oh, she's got the back! This is very dangerous for Iori Echigo. That was a dangerous move. Still three minutes left on the clock. She has lots of time to work this back. Okay, a hand fight there. Echigo doesn't want to make a mistake here. At this level, May, just one small mistake and that yes. choke goes in in a flash. Right, it's all about this hand fight, but sometimes, you know, you, you want to get that feet out of you and get those hooks out yeah that's when you make a mistake lots of pressure here from the back from the team 10th planet member lila smaja cruz remember she's fresh she didn't mm. get her chance to step onto the mat yeah but she goes doing a good job defending that choke she wants to get out a little bit more to her back on a mat. Smaja Cruz staying very tight. Yes, Ichigo wants to face, face Lila. Doesn't want to look down. Doesn't want to face down. Now this is where Lila can't, she can't stop. She, she has a dominant position, she can work the submission, but if right. she slows down, the referee will stand them up. Mm -hmm.
Still got the hooks in, Smudger Cruz. Trying to four. flatten her out yeah. a little bit. Ichigo surviving so far. She has under 90 seconds left on the clock. I think Lila is trying to look for an arm bar. To make a transition to arm bar, probably. Yeah, so just stepping up with that right foot. Getting her weight up in preparation. Mm -hmm. Let's see if she goes for it with just one minute left on yes. the clock. There's, there it is. One minute left to the match. Very she nice goes. transition. In a bad spot here. Oh, Cross the face. That. She want to come up and defend that arm. That's 40 seconds. She can survive this if she hangs on. Lila looking for the submission. Yeah, Lila is pretty calm, waiting for the timing, but let's see if she can finish here. Let's see what adjustment she can make in the final 20 seconds. Yeah. Echigo hanging on. Pushing the face. Pushing the face, almost an eye poke there. Yeah. Obviously not intentional. Very tight defense. Oh! So close! Lila Smasher Cruz unable to finish off with the arm bar. <laughs> Echigo looks to her teammates. <laughs> And she manages to survive that onslaught. It was a very good job of Ichigo. Bring it to a draw. And it's a draw. Both fighters coming off, which means our second and last of the two fresh members of each team will face each other. Team BJJ Kunoichi looking very pleased with that there, although yeah. they didn't get the tap, they managed right. to take out one of the incredibly strong members of uh -huh. Team 10th Planet, which says a lot for the skills and survival of Iori Echigo. Up next, representing Team BJJ Kunoichi, Nanami Ichikawa. She represents Arete BJJ. Ichikawa started with Jiu Jitsu and Judo, her base. She took third place last year in the World Jiu Jitsu Championships, won the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam Jiu Jitsu Tokyo event, and this year won the Gonna Be Cup International Jiu Jitsu Tournament. Fabiana George, representing 10th Planet Denver and 10th Planet Decatur, I believe, under Brandon Nikaha. Oh, there's a um, Already uh, threatening uh, is George. Nice color, trying to pull that. George is an ADCC Trials quarterfinalist, EBI 18 qualifier winner, got caught in a triangle and survived against Maisa Bastos, I believe. Look out for George's half guard and top game. Very strong guard passing, good leg locks. And we may see some rubber guard from her. Mm -hmm. She's the only Brazilian on the team, but born in Miami, I hear. Oh, there's the choke attempt. Kamichikawa. Das. Getting deep. Getting deep. No other space there now. George doing the right thing. Yeah, as long as she has that arm. I couldn't quite see the angle there. Was that a dart? Yes, but it's not deep enough. No, it's out now. Yeah. George got out. Going into guard again. Ichikawa still looking for that. Dars. 
following that excitement there. Mm -hmm. The crowd in usual Japan style comes oh, down deep. and deep. loops for the next piece of technical action coming up here on the Quintet Fight Night 3 mat. And I'm Ichikawa staying on that neck control of Fabiana George. Ichikawa, Ichikawa has Rolls over. judo background. The person who has a judo background, they're really strong in the physical. Once they get those kind of submission, it's really hard to get out. Strong grip, strong arms. Mm. Strong base. It's Maja Cruz surviving so far here in the second bout of this finals. Telling her yeah, to kick now. that leg over to the left to raise up the hips. Yep, there's a 10th planet move here. It takes away the base of their opponent, and now Smadja Cruz has some yes. great options available to her. Getting on top. Beautiful technique there. Create space from the bottom. Nanami Ichikawa. Working the Z guard. Ichikawa's corner telling her to watch out for her the leg attacks from George. <laughs> Trying to pass guard. Ichikawa. He breaks them. Back to the center of the mat. Just a reset. No. She does awarded. George attacking the posture of each car. Eddie Bravo calling, fight, fight, keep fighting. Ichikawa pulls the arm out. Out of danger for the moment. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Again, Ichikawa threatening the Dars. Ichikawa might need to control the head of George. Yeah, F Fabiana George is able to able to keep some space in there. Strong neck work. Let's see if she can scramble on up over there. Ichikawa. Pressure on top, very heavy hips on top of George. George using the leg there to control the movement of Ichikawa. The referee stops the clock. And the Shiro given to both George and Ichikawa. Now remember, folks, the Shido's can come into play later on. Right now, no big deal. But so far, Team 10th Planet has two, and Team BJJ Kunoichi has two. They'll only be tallied up if it goes to a draw at the end. Two minutes left in the battle. Still heavy on top here, Nanami Ichikawa. She doesn't seem interested in fighting off her back at all. She mm. wants to keep that pressure on the top, keep those hips heavy, and keep threatening the neck right. of George. 
Here's an uh, Armin Triangle attempt. She's going to have to work to get out of this here because if Ichikawa manages to get her weight in the right position, it could get very dangerous for right. Fabiana George. Oh, this is looking dangerous now. If she gets that leg through, George is going to have to scramble fast. So Ichikawa far, might need to kick no that leg and pull out. One minute left. Just one minute left. So far, George is not answering the phone. Bringing that elbow down. Switches to now. The arm, arm now. Ichikawa. The clock is ticking down, Mei Yamaguchi just yes. coming up to the 30 seconds left in this boat. We're still in the second member of each team. There's still three potential members to come out. Following this, should the clock run out. Still with the pressure on the neck there, but I don't think it's particularly tight. And there's the bell. It's a draw. A round of applause here from the audience following the heart and skill of these two Quintet Fight Night 3 competitors. And they both come off the mat. Now, next up, Grace Gundrum. Young Grace Gundrum faces... It's a... Oh, sorry. Yeah, my Karpinen. mistake. Yeah. Elvira Karpinen faces Yuki Tsuyuchi next. The powerful and technical Karpinen. That's right. We saw her tap out three members of Team Deep Jewels in the first round. Yeah, but um, Sugiuchi also had a three armbar submission. That's right. So you're looking at the cream of the crop here right now. Mm -hmm. In the finals of this Quintet Fight Night, three female <laughs> Open <laughs> Championships. <laughs> Elvira Karpinen. <laughs> And Yuki Sugiuchi. And you too. The weight difference being more than seven kilograms, just four minutes on the clock. As I said, this size difference is kind of interesting. Immediately, Karpinen goes to the leg attacks. Uh, uh, Sugiuchi. Sugiuchi with a yeah. leg attack of her own. Yeah. Forcing Karpinen to scramble a little bit. It's a very, yeah. All the way from Finland, yes. Uh huh. It's a um, very smart move of Sugiuchi going by herself, you know, going first, attacking first. Oh. This, there's a big size difference. There might be hard time for Karpinen looking for the submission. Yeah. The ankle again there. She took yeah. a total victory in one of the bouts in the first round. And following that, an armbar victory and a face lock. Mm -hmm. Sugiuchi is uh, very technical, so hopefully she can survive all those submission attempts. Yeah, and as we know from her record and her performance here today, her arm bars are supremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. Karpinen has a right hand tied up there, and she's trying to get it out between the legs. Sugiuchi. Knee on the belly. 
There's the pressure and the size difference coming through. Now Suguchi doesn't want to make a mistake here. Want Watch Kapi then walk her hand up the mat there, slowly opening up the armpit of Sugiuchi. Very nice movement by Cartman. Slowly isolating that left arm of Yuki Suguchi. If she manages to get over there, Suguchi will be in a lot of trouble. There she goes, adjusting, pushing it over. Suguchi wants to make a, create a space and pull that arm back. But Karpney has a very nice pressure there. Oh, incredible pressure. If she oh, can wow. get ear to shoulder to ear, it will be all over mm -hmm. for the team BJJ Kunoichi member, Yuki Looks Sugiuchi. Tight, but I think um, Sugiuchi's neck is really uh, thin. So, One minute left on the clock. Carpenter having a, having a hard time putting pressure on that. And she's doing the right thing, Suguchi holding on to the left leg there yes. of Kapanen. Because if Kapanen gets yes. that leg out, then she'll be able to push her chest up, which she's doing now anyway. Mm. And Suguchi has given up that control of the leg, and that pressure of the chest over the arm will close the gap. Yeah, it looks tight, but I think Suguchi can survive this. Yeah. This is a size difference, you know. She is surviving, yeah. incredibly <laughs> so. Yeah. 15 seconds left on the clock. She might be able to take out the bigger yes. opponent here today. Yes. Elvira Karpanen has just a few seconds left on the clock. Can Sugiyuchi write this out? There's the bell, she does. Beautiful. Wow. Great she is happy with herself. Right. Surviving the yeah. onslaught of the Viking herself. Yeah, this is what happened when, when this uh, size difference appears. You know. A draw, that's three draws in a row, me Yamaguchi. And now on to the fourth member of each team. This is a hell of a matchup for young Grace Gundrum. Yeah. Taking on Rika Koyuasa. <laughs> this so is going to be. It was, it, was, it was threatening. It was threatening. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared. It was scared. Yeah, that's what Sugiuchi was saying. Well, she didn't show it. She stayed very calm. Yeah. She did the right thing, surviving that there. Now, two incredibly technical grapplers up here on the mat now. Young Grace Gundrum, still 16 years of age, the silent assassin, representing 10th Planet Bethlehem. Team 10th Planet, Fukushu, Grace Gundrum! And Rika Koyuasa. Team BJJ Kunoichi, Fukushu, Yuka Rikako! Representing Paraestra, Shinagawa, Sasa BJJ, here in Tokyo, Japan. Eight minutes Hi. out for this. The fourth Fukusho member of each team. It now gets very nail biting here, Mei Yamaguchi, because mm -hmm. we're down to just a very, very small technical differences. Small mistakes can change the way of the outcome yeah. of this tournament. There's already... Yuasa wasting no uh -huh. time slapping on that triangle right. choke. Grace tucking her fist tight. into the space. Let's see how Yuasa deals with that defense. Now trying to break the balance, pulling that leg and going back to the arm again. Switches to the Oboplata. Grace Kondra manages to get out of there. Yuasa has to reevaluate. Grace 
Marcus Gundrum not crumbling under the pressure here of this high level opponent on the quintet mat here. She is used to facing absolute killers over in the States. Yoasa wrapped around that right leg of Gundrum trying to pull her in. Switches to the left leg now. Looking for the toe hold here. Yoasa threatening that left leg she has locked in. Yuasa will go back to that if she takes the attention away from mm -hmm. something else. Referee calling for action. That is what he gets. Five and a half minutes left on the clock. And look for the arm bar by couple. Up the arm. Mm -hmm. go with the pressure on the face of the, yes. the knee over the top there, forcing Grace to switch up her body. But Grace using that leg very effectively, defending all the submission attempt. Diver stop. Referee stops the action and stop. Goes out one shido each. So that's one shido each in this bout and tallying the team shidos they have three apiece. Mm -hmm. This is coming down to a very close final by the looks of it here today, May. Yeah, and it, it looks very aggressive, but still the referee wants them to be more aggressive. Well, there is an argument that stopping the action and, 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 work, and giving shields like that makes the, the fighters take more time to work their right. positions and right. submissions again. So, so far tonight, there has been no lack of action. Mm -hmm. Four minutes to go. It's a game of leg locks here right now. First to get up on top is Bika Kujuasa. Coming up to the halfway point of this bout. Yuasa threatening the neck. Putting a good pressure on the neck. Trying to pass the guard. It's almost ending up on top there. She has a very good control on the neck, but Great back and forth action here yes. from both of these high level competitors in this final of Quintet Fight Night. Three back on their feet. The referee. Stop. Stop. Either one of these fighters, should they receive another Shido, will be DQ'd. Well, me, I'm very impressed with the way Grace Gundrum is dealing with yeah. the level and attacks of Rika Koyuasa. Very calm moves by only a 16 year old. Oh, look at this now. Yuasa on the attack again. She gives up on it. And now, Gundrum with the leg attack. Looking for a knee bar attempt there, not quite in deep enough, but she managed to get her to move and escape. Grace back on the attack off her back. Yuasa trying to step through into side position. Threatening the leg again, and the toe hold. Can to see from this angle how much trouble Gundrum is in. She still have it. 
two minutes left in the bout. Still on the attack, still looking for the submission. Both of these competitors given 100% here tonight. And a round of applause from the audience to show that. Nicago keep looking for the submission. There's the knee over. Again, but Grace just spins out of there. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure to the couple, you know. Less She's than 90 seconds. Four-time world champion fighting against a young star here. She needs to submit her. Yeah, this says a lot for the skill and heart of Team 10th Planet Grace Gundrum. One minute left. 60 seconds on the clock. Armbar. Getting tight, getting tight. Uh, Pops out of there. Grace Gundrum now on the attack herself. It's a scramble with just 40 odd seconds left. The crowd getting very animated here in the arena. Wow. 30 seconds. Switching from one submission attempt to the other, one position to the other. Very Both. flexible. Yeah. 15 seconds. It looks like we're going to see another draw here, May, which yeah. comes right down to the bare bones of each team. There's the bell. Mm. It's a draw. They both come yeah. off. Wow. That was some beautiful work. Both grapplers come off the map. So, May Yamaguchi, we are down to the last member of each team. Liz Karmush will step out to Team 10th Planet. And Akiko Sawada will represent Team DJJ Kunoichi. Well, so far, there's four draws, and each team has the same uh, warnings. Same number of Shido. And what will happen if the last match will come to draw? It goes right down to the, the referees. The judges will raise their flags to decide who was more aggressive, who was looking for the, the finish. The total aggressiveness of the team. Right? That's right. Now, look at the weights here. There's a 10 kilogram difference, which means there's only four minutes to make something happen here. Yes. Submission wise. Yes. They do not want to let this go. This is a huge amount of pressure for both of these right. fighters. Eddie Bravo echoes exactly what I said here right now. You've got to go after it, Liz. And Akiko Sawada also knows she has to go after it. Karmush very aggressive off the bat here. Less than 10 seconds and she's secured a dominant position. Very quick. Now putting on good pressure on Sawada. She has the full mount. Let's see if she can work on Ezekiel choke. There she's trying to sneak the left fist in and grab. Sorry. That looks a little bit... With a right hand, grab the left wrist. This is looking, this is looking dangerous already yeah, for it, Sawada. It looks a little bit deep. Corner telling her to keep moving, keep moving. Can Liz Karmush finish this quickly and take the victory for her team 
Oh, it looks a little bit deep. It will be an astounding win if she can get this. Ah, she gives up the Ezekiel. Not enough space to work it by the looks of it. Let's see what she moves to now. Now Salada doesn't want to make any of the mistakes here. Not at all, because there's still plenty of time left on the clock. Right. We're still over half of the four allotted minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. The corner telling her to keep tight. Keep them tight your elbows. Karmush just smothering her, trying to get her to move. Now trying to isolate that right arm of Salada. Let's see what she can do with this. Salada manages to get back half guard. Surviving so far the onslaught of the incredible Liz Karmush. Salada worrying about her left arm, trying to defend it. Very heavy on top is Liz. Uh, Salada, yeah. 10 kilogram weight difference shining through. Uh -huh. Now, so far, there's a choke attempt here. Salada's team telling her just to hang on, just yeah, to hold on, yeah. just to keep calm. Yeah, Salada wants to face Liz, but there's a very good control of the Salada's arm by Liz. We are down to the last one minute, as announced by the legendary Lenny Hart. Salada surviving. Trying to survive. Karmush this, yeah. attacking. The clock ticks down in Quintet Fight Night 3. It all boils down to these final few seconds. 30 seconds. Time stop. Time stop. Time stop. Obviously, Team 10's Planet are not going to be happy with that because there's just no time left to work a submission after that. But so far, the action, the aggression, the control has all been Liz Carmouche. Should this clock tick out, I'm pretty sure they'll be awarded their victory. Yeah. However, Saladan's still surviving. With the closing seconds before the bell. Kamu switches to the toe hold. And there's the bell. Oh, there was a tap there yeah. after the bell. She got the tap after the bell. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. I hope her ankle is okay. She got it. She got the submission. It, yeah. was, it was too late, but she got it. And I think... So it's going to be a draw? It will be a draw, yeah, it will but be a draw. we can imagine who the victory is going to. That's so, so close. Uh -huh. BJJ Kunoichi, so close. So we're looking at the totals uh -huh. of the Shidos now, and as I mentioned earlier on the broadcast, Grace Gundrum picked up two, Fabiana George picked up one, Maja Cruz picked up one, three for Team 10th Planet. Yori Eguchi, one, Nanami Ichikawa, one, Rika Koyoasa, two. So they are even in terms yes. of Shido. So thinking about the aggression of each team, this is hard. It's going to be a very hard decision to choose which one was aggressive. So so their decision making decision only from the uh, Taisho. Which is the last part. Yes. And anybody watching that mm -hmm. will know 
Liz Carmouche. Team 10th Planet take the victory here tonight at Winter Fight Night 3. Live on UFC Fight Pass, you are witnessing history as we speak. An incredibly close final, but well fought from both teams. It all boiled down to that last bout. Liz Carmouche, obviously her size and her strength difference play a part, but her aggression and skill shone through without a doubt. I'm incredibly impressed with Akiko Sawada. Uh-huh. Surviving. And Yuki yeah. Sugiuchi. Yeah. Surviving bigger and physically stronger uh -huh. opponents with skill and determination. That was amazing. And now, we'll commence the victory ceremonies. Fighters who competed in today's event, would you all please come up to the mat? Bringing all, all the, the teams. Today. And the single match. Competitors up to the mat. Eddie Bravo, visibly happy <laughs> with the result here tonight. Not yeah. only does he have a men's team quintet winner, he now has a female mm -hmm. quintet team winner. That that's amazing, and you know it's it was very impressive to the Japanese jujitsu team because you know. Um, I know that in foreign country like United States, they have a lot of good grapplers, but in Japan, they, we train more in geese. So, but you know, we still have the good technique and pretty strong. So they, they did really good job showing that Japan has good grapplers too. So many factors at play here. You know, it's, it's not just the skill, but it's the order of the teams, right. how, how they send their members out, which order, who faces who, who manages to get a draw and take out a bigger opponent. And ultimately, who's last? The yeah. last member. Very impressive. Quintet never fails to entertain us, bringing you the grappling pleasures in the best team format on the planet today. You can expect more where this came from. Kazushi Sakuraba takes the mic for the award ceremony. え、いい、あの、団体戦としてはいい感じの勝負になったと思いますけども。エディさん、テスプラネット<笑> 2回目 guys are strong. That's the second time you've come this here the and won. time you've won. Team 10 Planet is very strong, isn't it? 僕もテスプラネット入れてください. Please let me also study with 10 Planet. Thank you, Lenny. <laughs> 皆さんも他のチームも皆さんすごいいい試合っていうかあの一本取りに行く試合できたんで良かったと思います。ちょっとさっきのパターンでまたメダルをあげたいのでメダルは今日はありますんでえっとまた行きますんで。He Please feel free to join in. Uh, the medals are heart shaped this time. I <laughs> wasn't laughing. You cannot help but love Kazushi Sakurawa, the producer of such a wonderful event. Every single show so far, Quintet won. Two and three and Quintet Fight Nights one, two and three have been a resounding success. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And it's a, it's a 
good chance for women to show that we can do this, you know. Exactly. You know, the, the women fighters have not had enough exposure over the years, but now it's all coming to light, and they're coming out of the woodwork in their droves. There are plenty of high, high-level grapplers around the planet right now. Ooh, watching this and thinking about the next all-female quintet tournament. Well, in Japan, there's already amateur quintet all over the, the all over Japan, and there's so many competitors having fun fighting with team. So I hope this will go out to world and get more more grapplers to fight with team. That's right. Yeah, the first amateur tournament here in Tokyo. We've been holding them around Japan since then. But the first one, I believe, there were around 40 teams applied. Yeah. And there was a lot of smiles and cheers to all the team. Everyone is enjoying this. Oh, it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful thing. It's the purest thing in the world right now. Quintet Fight Night 3. Let's take a look at some of the action, how it unfolded here today. In the first match, Liz Carmouche and King Reyna took each other out with a draw. Grace Gundrum and Hikaru Aono also a draw. Elvira Karpinen stepped up and just three submissions in a row, taking out the whole of the remaining. Yeah, and different submission. Team that was Deep impressive. Yeah. yeah, it was just, just beautiful work. In the second match between BJJ Kunoichi and San Florella, excellent work from Yuki Sugiichi. Mm -hmm. Submitting all the opponent by armbar. Three armbars in a row, yep. Uh, and a ninja choke we also saw. Plenty of armbars, a ninja choke. And then the finals here tonight. Wow, there was a ton of draws and it went right down to the last two, Liz Carmouche and Akiko Sawada. Mm -hmm. And Liz Carmouche took the win. She, she got the tap after the bell, but yeah. well, they won it yeah. with aggression. Quintet Fight Night 3, you have witnessed history. You are listening to Stuart Fulton. And Mei Yamaguchi. Sayonara. Sayonara.